Hi, and welcome to the podcast for the 9th to the 15th of August. Welcome, Denny. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to dive in, first of all, this week. Denny and I have just been talking about the weird and wonderful energies that we were experiencing last week. Um, and I'm really excited to see what you bring through, of course, this week as well, knowing what I'm bringing through. So I'm going to start actually this week with my card, which is this one called Perspective from the Dream Dust Shamanic Tarot deck by Sue Kovacs. And this card actually for me feels incredibly aligned to the energies I've been really feeling into uh, this week. Um, and it feels as if we're all being called to look at things in a new way at the moment. Shifting your perspective can be a really powerful way, actually, of releasing um, anything, releasing suppressed emotions, outdated thoughts, or even clearing old belief systems as you anchor in a new way to see the world around you. So this week, I think you're really being asked to consider things differently to look at where you may be even holding yourself back because you're still stuck in an old way of seeing the world, which is no longer true for you. So I love this card. And as I go through the numerology, um, and I think probably even the message from the Akasha this week, you'll see the alignment uh, of the energies that we're working with. So talking from a numerological aspect, for this week ahead. We're actually in the 32nd week of the year. So this is actually a five week, which is also happening in a five year. So this week holds a double dose, therefore, of five energy. And five is the energy of change. It's very fast paced. And it brings uh, a sense of freedom or liberation with it. So this is really sort of uh, the energy of movement. It really moves you through things. So you can expect, I think, over the coming week, um, change to happen quickly and things to move quickly. You may notice, I think, throughout the week that it's much easier to push through any resistance that you have or clear any blocks that you're working through at the moment as you align to that energy. So this energy can actually feel a little chaotic or unpredictable. So it isn't always comfortable to sit in this energy. However, it is always uh, very good at pushing you out of your comfort zone and moving you forwards in some way. So the trick really to working with this energy is literally, I think, to kind of expect the unexpected, or maybe even don't have any expectations because they're going to change. So keep your focus on your intention for the week ahead, but let go of any expectations about how that is meant to look in terms of you know, what you're expecting. Uh, maybe just enjoy the ride instead. It's going to be a little bit of a, a roller coaster ride as we transition through these energies. This energy is very spontaneous. And because of that, because it's very unpredictable, it can also sometimes trigger fear in people, particularly if you're a person that maybe needs to control things or needs to have a plan of action. So this week may therefore bring up a lot of experiences that help you to release your need for control. There may be some learning around letting go or surrendering or surrendering more deeply even to what is instead of trying to plan everything and feel safe. So this is a bit of a mixed bag of energy for people and it will really depend on how you personally um, flow or are able to go with the flow or how easy it is for you to go with the flow um, or how difficult that is for you as to how you transition through the week ahead. So it will actually be um, a really good, I guess, opportunity to observe within yourself how comfortable or how uncomfortable you are with the unknown or the unexpected. 
And I always think of five energy as a little wild, a little unpredictable, but I actually quite like it because it mixes things up and it actually pushes me out of my comfort zone sometimes. So that's the way I tend to look at five energy. But we also need to look, of course, at the numbers that are bringing us into that five energy through the archetypes of the three and two. This is a 32 five week. So three will generally bring up themes around uh, communication but it can also be related to how you socialize with other people. And two brings you deeper into connection with others and helps you to hold more empathy with other people. So you may find that when you're in a 32 five week that you feel a strong desire to express yourself more deeply with those that you are really close to. And that may therefore lead to deep and heartfelt conversations with loved ones that kind of bring healing or change to those relationships. But again, expect the unexpected because those conversations may lead to something completely different um, to what you were maybe expecting them to. So, you know, those are, I think, whatever we do in terms of conversation with others, that can always bring a change in perspective, first of all, but it can also bring healing to those relationships. So, you know, it's just going into those deep conversations without necessarily a plan or without an expectation of what they're going to create for you and just allowing it to be whatever it needs to be to heal that relationship. Um, and we are, of course, of a, as I've mentioned before, sitting in a powerful concentration of two energy at the moment anyway. You know, we're in the 2000s and we're in 2021. So there's a lot of two energy that we're, we're working with anyway that's always weaving its way through our experiences. And that's going to keep bringing us back into themes of interconnection, seeing the bigger picture and, and, and holding a deeper understanding of where we're heading collectively particularly as a collective and that also I think aligns to the card that I pulled this week and how how you need to change your perspective as our old systems and structures begin to fall away because a lot of the way that we work or show up in the world is based on those old systems and structures and and the perspectives that we've created through working with those so this energy can really help you to begin to see how you need to bring more balance into the world for us all to thrive and how we can work with that in a new way. So that was the numerology for this week. And then I sat with um, the Akashic Records this morning and brought through the following message um, for the podcast for this week. So the message was basically stop listening with your ears and start feeling with your heart. It is time to shut down the external chatter that is of no relevance to your own personal experience. By tuning out, you can once again find the true intention behind the words that you are listening to. You can feel the resonance within your own heart and whether it is aligned or misaligned to your own feelings. Your thinking mind is overwhelmed with information, and most of this information is of no relevance to you at a personal level. At times of overwhelm such as this, tune into your feeling heart instead, and it is here that you will be guided along the most positive path forwards. So that's the beautiful message I leave you with uh, from the Akasha. And now, Denny, I'm keen to hear what you've got to share with us too. Mm, well, first of all, let me say, tuning out to tune in. I love that. <laughs> I love that feeling of just kind of like setting your radio dial a little bit off so that you're not hearing clearly so that something else can start coming in. Um, and then the expect the unexpected seems like it's the bigger theme for the year, really, that whole expect the unexpected. Um, and yes, change. You and I as Taurians, sometimes change can be uncomfortable. Um, but with Uranus in Taurus, that's what we've been asked to do this. You know, it's a big, big part of this year as well. Thanks for bringing all that through, Fee. You're welcome. Uh, 
I just wanted to speak a little bit first to this place of the, the word I keep getting for this week, but also what I experienced last week was discomfort, just this place of feeling uncomfortable. And um, I think that in a way we're all concentrating so much, like you say, on what's going on around us, that tuning in to so much information um, that the, the world is, you know, pondering and talking about and discussing. And, and it's really struck me that that discomfort that's out there, I can feel it in me and that it's time to maybe address that discomfort within rather than looking externally at all the uncomfortable things that are happening in the world around me. Um, you know, if we if we go back to what's happening outside, it's just a reflection of what's happening internally. I love the idea of us all drawing our attention internally and um, feeling into where that discomfort is from a really personal, intimate point of view. Uh, I'll start with uh, the week the um, on the today we have um, Venus and Neptune um, in opposition in our skies above. So Venus is sitting in Virgo and Virgo is um, the planet of health and of service, of organization and home tasks and, 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 and getting things in order. Um, and then you've got Neptune sitting in Pisces. Um, and that's, you know, the word I'm getting with this Neptune and Pisces is this um, wanting to escape at the moment. Um, there's a feeling of, um, I, I often think of like, um, the way a lot of um, spiritual beings in this world is sitting in their upper chakras rather than being grounded on the earth. And I get that feeling of like when the earth's uncomfortable, there can be this wanting to get out of your body and, and live in this upper realm. And it feels like those two places, Venus sitting in Virgo and Neptune in opposition to Neptune in Pisces, there is that uh, not a battle but there's just this two places inside that don't seem to coexist with each other um, and that can feel um, I think uncomfortable um, and then on the 11th we've got Mercury sitting in the last few de degrees of Leo um, so that's that place of wanting to express yourself you know Leo is um uh, a real uh, self-confident, uh, you know, a lot of actors are Leos. They want to get out there and express themselves and express the way that they are to the world. And, and Mercury sitting there in Leo in the last few degrees um, in opposition to Jupiter um, and Jupiter sitting in the last few degrees of Pisces. Um, and again, this is kind of like, it feels a little bit at odds with each other. There's this potentially, and it speaks to something that you said, Fee, and that is this, this wanting to express something, wanting to show some part of self. And then this idea that maybe, maybe there's a, a, a something that's asking you to look even deeper or higher at that, that maybe that's not true. That part of you that has been asking to express, maybe just taking a step back and, and asking yourself, is this really true? Is there something else that if that could be revealed if I was to maybe change my perspective and look at it in a different way? Um, that feels like that energy of that opposition to me. Um, and, and now I'm going to bring in my card and I picked the judge from the architect types de deck and I, I know this just resonated with me I mean it fell out as soon as I opened the deck and it really resonates with me because um, it's it's somewhere that I've been sitting in all of the discomfort and that is around again I think that there's a lot of judgment out in the world and I think at the moment um, the focus is inward and where are you judging yourself we're sitting in such a weird weird time of this world and 
whatever it is, maybe on however you're handling this, whatever is this is bringing out in you, we can be really judgmental over ourselves. You know, uh, if I decide not to go for a walk today and there's this, oh my God, it's the only time I get out of the house at the moment with, with lockdown happening, I can really go to a, you know, um, beating myself up about it. And I've noticed that a lot over the last week that, that I'm really judging um, day-to-day things that I'm doing. And I think it's just the message is it's okay. Whatever you're doing to cope with the times that we're in, um, it's okay. It's needed. It is a type of self-care, even if it seems at times like it's not. Uh, just being a a little bit more um, compassionate to yourself for these times that we're moving through, but on a really day-to-day basic level, which is that Virgo sign, um, just really um, being okay with what you're doing for self-care, even if that self-care doesn't look like what um, it may traditionally look like Um, it's okay Uh, where you're at is okay and whatever you're doing to cope it's okay and I really felt that about the judge card that um, that the judge was bringing that internal place of judgment and that's what what maybe um, we need to look at a little bit more um, with love and compassion On the 12th, Mercury moves into Virgo. So once Mercury's in Virgo, we've got all the personal planets in the sign of Virgo. So Mercury, Venus, and Mars, they're all the um, things that are related to us personally. They're the planets that are closest in to the sun and the earth. Uh, They're all in um, in Virgo. So that place of service and health. Along with those three personal planets is Medusa, which I spoke about last week, and Hygieia. And Hygieia is a um, uh, a, um, medicine woman, uh, medicine goddess. She is actually um, to do with health, but um, she's a healer in a magical way almost like miraculous healings it's interesting that she's there with medusa because um part of the um the story around medusa is when medusa's head was cut off and all her toxic blood was released um it was actually hygieia that took the toxic blood and turned it into a um a healing um potion that could I think awaken the dead I mean that's I don't know where that's coming from in my head but that it was it's very powerful her magic is very powerful and she's sitting there in this in this place with all our personal planets um, in this um, sign of service and health so it feels like we're really being supported in 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 beautiful ways by Hygieia being there uh, then on the 15th so we're rounding out the week with this really interesting square <laughs> that I can see in the chart which is we've got the sun in Leo we've got the moon in Scorpio Um, We have Saturn, which we know is in Aquarius, and Uranus in Taurus. These are all opposite sides of the zodiac. They're all the fixed signs. Um, And they're all squaring each other. It feels uncomfortable. It feels like the fact that there are all these fixed signs that we're being asked to move things and to shake things and to go places where our foundations are changing. Our foundations are shaking. The word I feel for this is earthquake. Uh, It just doesn't feel comfortable, but underneath it all, whatever is shaken up is for our own good. If we can look at that, 
I mean, we're in such challenging times and I know, Fee, we say this a lot, but it's all for us. <laughs> it's all moving us into better ways of being. Um, it's all hopefully, you know, the earth is, uh, you know, the shakeups that are happening around the earth can be really painful. They can be really difficult to move through, but they're happening for a reason and they're happening for the larger good. I think I want to just round the week off by, by speaking about that a little bit, that, that, you know, sometimes those uncomfortable places are um, the most beautiful or they can open the most beautiful transformation and change. That's it for me. Oh, I feel like I need to take a deep breath now. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And yeah, there's, uh, it's going to be, I think, an interesting week ahead for people. And it's going to be, um, it's going to be so different for different people as well. It's not, it doesn't feel like there's any sameness to this for each person, because we're all going to be, as we always do, of course, to transition through this in, um, our own way in regards to where we're sitting at that particular moment. But I think, I mean, I don't understand this, the whole square things, but what I felt from that definitely was, it's almost like there's these opposing or opposite sides that um, we've really been talking about for a lot recently is these opposing opinions and opposing energies and, and that sort of thing that, it's always uncomfortable and you're sitting in the middle of those um, uh, opposing places or choices or experiences. And it is always about finding your inner balance around those. And it feels like we're all going to be doing a lot of that this week based on our current experience and where we're sitting. Yes, and it, it strikes me as sometimes in order to find balance, we need to be out of balance mm -hmm. and be out of balance, possibly in the opposite way to what we think. So, you know, with this whole um, Saturn and Uranus um, um, square this year, the big energy of the year astrologically, um, you know, Saturn rule maker, Uranus rule breaker, whichever of those you sit more comfortably in, you're being asked to look at the opposite, at the mm -hmm. other one. And that's, there's gifts for you in that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I've, you know, like I said, I, I kept, I'm constantly saying it at the moment, I'm such a rule breaker. And yet I can mm -hmm. feel the other part, the Saturn part of me really speaking loudly. And I'm all so uncomfortable with sitting in that place because I like being a rule breaker, but it's it the, the reality is is the, the Saturn part of me that is coming strongly um, to the front in order for this place of balance to happen. So wherever you sit, look at the other. Yes. <laughs> and, and maybe tip to that side and see what that brings up. Not that you're going to sit there forever, but that might show you and reveal something that's um, that really needs looking at in order for change to happen. Oh, I so hear you on that. It's, it's an invitation, isn't it, to look at that other perspective, I think. And um, it, it literally just describes my relationship with my husband, you know, the rule maker and the rule breaker. And, um, and just, you know, he's so driven by truth. And, and we've had some really deep conversations about this recently. And it, it for that I'm truly grateful because he gives me an opportunity to see it from that other perspective that I sometimes struggle to see um, because I, I'm driven by balance so I'm always trying to find my the balance between things and sometimes that prevents me from d diving deep into you know the extremes of of these different sides so yeah, for me and uh, for Clive, this has been an interesting uh, week to sit in this energy. <laughs> I love it. Happening, happening in your life every day. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. <laughs>
he doesn't <laughs> listen to this <laughs> Maybe he should. <laughs> well, I think he does, actually. <laughs> Quietly. <laughs> yes. Oh. So go go well this week. It's it's you know another one, but um, another twenty twenty one week. Before we go this week, it's exciting for the other world because we are opening a um, group, a circle called the Collective, the Other World Collective. Um, both Fee and I have been feeling a need um, to have a place to land with women, with sisters, um, where we can speak our truths. Um, where we can speak in a really open, vulnerable way of what's going on in our lives, um, of what's coming up, um, just a really loving place to land. Fee, do you want to go into that a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, the conversations we've had, we've been talking through this sense of feeling more connected within ourselves and yet feeling less connected to other people. Uh, and so there's been, I know I've had a lot of conversations with friends, with clients about that, that sense of needing to find uh, a tribe of people again, because they've shifted so much. And so it's felt really beautiful to open up this space as an online container for reconnection and reconnection at a different level and and I think even you and I don't really know yet what that means or how that's going to unfold but I'm kind of excited to explore it along with lots of other people who are also feeling that too yeah and look this has been sitting there for about six months we've been sitting with the the knowledge that we were going to open this monthly space um, and I guess uh, again, you know, being in Australia and there've been so many lockdowns again, um, there is the sense of disconnection from people. And there are, you know, I know that there's a, a lot of um, resistance to meeting online, but that's where we have our opportunity. And I certainly have discovered over the last year um, how when you are in a group, even if it's online with similar people that have um, not similar views because I love the idea of bringing different views into a group and bringing anything that's coming up but just um, with the same kind of heart opening to to holding space for whatever comes up in each other um, it's it's really powerful it can be just as powerful online um, and, it, and it feels like a really needed place right now um, a place to feel safe to speak your truth and to ask questions um, and in this monthly um, gathering um, we're also going to offer a, a theme of the month and the theme for this month is all around truth and speaking truths um, and also maybe some practices that might help. There might be a meditation. There might be some inquiries. Um, and we're um, hoping to meet um, online twice during the month. So the, the first month um, we are meeting for the first time on, can you remember the date, Fee? I think it's the 7th of September. 7th of September. It's a Tuesday. Um, yes. And... Um, then meet two two weeks um, after that. Um, we're going to it's it's the first month um, is just free for everybody just to join to come to experience um, to see if it's something for you. Uh, and then after that, um, we're going to um, open up the collective um, for a membership of um, twenty two dollars a month. And that will include two Zoom calls and out the, the theme for the month and whatever practices that we that we um, add. Yeah. And I think one of the things I'd just like to add to that about the online piece is I know we really love to, to gather and, and be in person uh, with each other and sit in circle. I mean, that's one of the most joyful things that um, we can do, particularly as women. But one of the things I've found, uh, particularly in my work and, and working all around the world, is how 
interesting it is to be able to connect with so many people in so many different countries and get different perspectives of how they are experiencing uh, these times and how they are uh, you know finding ways and, and different pathways through these times as well and I think the sharing of that is invaluable at the moment as we sit well us personally anyway at this time in a in more of a lockdown uh, stage. Yes, and I, I'm, I'm really excited about, I mean, both you and I love sitting in circle. We love taking women out to land and seeing how rich those groups can be. Um, I'm really excited about bringing a bit of that richness into, into this where, where more people can, can travel with us um, in a sense. And I would love also to for you and I to bring a bit of ourselves into the group with the astrology, with the numerology um, and with the Akashic so that we can offer um, that, that, that those sort of things that we do um, into the group as well. Oh, absolutely. I think that would be the, the kind of foundation for those two weekly meetups and uh, and sharing with each other. And we'll put some information below the podcast as to how you can connect with that and let us know that you would like to join that first uh, circle that we're running. Mm -hmm.